enter to his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. We thank you, God. We thank you for waking us up this morning. We thank you, God, that you allow us to see another day. Oh, God, we bless your name on today, God. We give you praise and give you honor, Lord, because you're worthy. Oh, God, we thank you for those who are here on this morning. And, oh, God, we thank you for those that are on the way. In the name of Jesus, we asking you right now to touch your people, God. Touch us right now, God. Touch us, God. You know what we need, God. In the name of Jesus, oh God, we ask you to heal the body, God. Heal the mind. Heal the soul. Heal the spirit. In the name of Jesus, oh God, we thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your deliverance. Oh God, we thank you for salvation. In the name of Jesus, oh God, we thank you, Lord, for everything you have done and everything that you're going to do for us. In the name of Jesus, we ask you to touch those that are sick in the hospital, sick in the convalescent home. Touch those that's behind bars, God. In the name of Jesus, we ask you to anoint us right now, God, in Jesus' name. Oh God, bless us, Lord. Bless us, Lord. Forgive us for anything that we said or done on this week. Oh God, we ask you, God, to have mercy on our souls, God. In the name of Jesus. And oh God, as your word go forth on this morning, God, we ask you to bless Elder Heider, God. Anoint him right now, God. Give him what to say and how to say. Oh God, let him feed us, God, the way you want us to be fed. In the name of Jesus, bless the Heider family, God. In the name of Jesus, keep them under your wings, love. Oh God, protect us. But not just them, God, but keep living word under your wings, Lord. Oh God, help us, God. Help us, God. We need your help, God. We can't do this alone. Help us, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen. I will be reading to you in Psalms 15. Lord, who shall abide in thy tabernacle? Who shall dwell in the holy hill? He that walketh uprightly and worketh righteousness and speaketh the truth in his heart. He that backbiteth not with his tongue, nor doeth evil to his neighbors, nor take up a reproach against his neighbor, in whose eyes a vile person is contemned, but he honored them that fear the Lord. He that sweareth to his own hurt and changeth not, he that putteth not out his money to usury, nor taketh the reward against the innocent. He that doeth these things shall never be moved. And the word of the Lord is blessed. And now you're in the hands of our minister of music. Let's say amen to him as he comes. Praise the Lord, church. Is there anybody here that knows God to be your strength? Can you just wave your hand if you know God to be your strength? He's an ever-present help in the time of trouble. He's all that we need. He will meet our needs. He will hear our faintest cry, and he'll answer by and by. You are my strength, strength like gold. In the fullness of your grace, in the
the power of your name you lift me up you lift me up in the fullness in the fullness of your grace in the power of your name you lift me up oh you lift me up why don't you help me sing in the fullness in the fullness in the power of your name you lift me up you lift me up you are my strength you are my strength come on give them a wave offering in the house this morning strength like no other oh strength like no other and it reaches to me Reaches to me. Oh, your peace reaches to me. Reaches to me. Oh, your love it reaches to me. Reaches to me. Oh, reaches to me. Somebody give God praise in the house this morning. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yes, 
God is real For I can feel Him in my soul Father God, we thank you now for your loving kindness and your tender mercies. Thank you for last night's sleep and this morning's arising. Thank you because you touched us with the finger of love. Thank you because you blessed us to assemble ourselves again. I thank you for the healing virtue of Jesus Christ. Those that have testimonies that go beyond what the doctors expected, I thank you for it. I thank you for my brothers and my sisters' victories as much as I thank you for mine. As I praise you, as I magnify you for somebody else, however you do it, I don't, I don't understand all of your workings, but it seems as though you bless the one that is blessing somebody else. And so I thank you for my brother, I thank you for my sister. I need you to know that I'm a grateful soul today. Realize that without you, I'm absolutely nothing. It's in you that I live, that I move, and that I have my existence. And without you, I can do absolutely nothing. One of the smallest meetings in churches today are prayer meetings. We'll go to a musical faster than we'll go to a prayer meeting. But today I need you to hear our prayers. Hear our prayers this day. We turn aside and offer ourselves to you. We offer our praises to you. We offer you glory, honor, and praise because it is yours. It belongs to you. I'm asking you to touch us now. Touch us now. Some pressed their way out. Some didn't really feel like coming out. Some pressed their way. And Lord, you see and you know. And because of that pressure of stressing to make it here, I pray a special blessing upon them now. Don't let their coming be in vain. Let us meet you. Let us have an, an encounter with you. I don't want to just be coming to church out of repetition. I don't want to be coming to church out of a habit. I don't want to just be coming to church because it's Sunday. I want to come and meet you. I want an encounter. I want an experience with you. Give me an experience with you. I don't care what they say about church today. I know they say it's changing. But one thing I know, you don't change. You're the same yesterday, today, and forever. And your word will not fail. Not one jot or tittle of your word will fail. We offer ourselves to you this day a living sacrifice. We place ourselves on 
the altar. Get the best out of us. Get the best. When others are looking at the worst of me, you know how to get the best of me. And I thank you. I thank you. I praise you. I glorify you. I extol you. I make your name big among the people. You are my God. You, you are the God that I serve. And I thank you for it now. Don't let our coming be in vain. Anybody that came with an expectation, I pray that you will grant whatever it is that they need now. We'll glorify you. We'll praise your name. Because it belongs to you. It belongs to you. It belongs to you. He said, lift your hands in the sanctuary. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. I will bless his holy name. I bless your name. Thank you. Jesus, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I felt as though I needed to park around prayer for a few moments. Um, I believe that the Lord is satisfied. I am picking up where I left off. I didn't really finish my message. I skipped to the end of the message and the Lord challenged me this week to go back and make two or three of the points that I should have made. We discussed who John the Baptist was or was not. He was not the Messiah. He was not Elijah nor was he that prophet. And we did determine that he was the voice crying in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord, straight the way that goes back to Isaiah chapter 40, when it's talking about bringing the high places down, the low places up, the crooked street, all of that is, 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 is what he is saying when he said, make straight the way. He's talking about the heart of man, not just a wilderness, but he's talking about the wilderness of the heart. And, and so he said, make straight the way of the Lord. Christ is the word. John is the voice. I am the voice crying. I, I, some writers say crying. Sometimes I say that, but that's not how John says it. So before I open today's message, I'm going to skip to the end of my message again. 
and show you one verse in John that gives the explanation of the entire book of John. He'll tell you exactly what the book of John, the apostle, is trying to express. And that's in John chapter 20, verse 31. But these are written, meaning these words are written, that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing ye might have life through his name. So that's the meaning of the book. He wants us to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. And in believing that, he wants us to act on that belief. We also establish that uh, John the Apostle is the author of the book. And John the Baptist is the one that is testifying or the one that's bearing witness. John is, is, is writing about John the Baptist and John the Baptist uh, is a witness. It's like he's on a stand. It's like he's in court and he is saying this is what I saw. This is what I know about Jesus and isn't it good to make it to a point where you don't just be supposing about Jesus. You make it to a point where you've had an experience and you can testify for yourself that he is a healer, that he is a deliverer, that he is a savior because he saved my wretched soul. So when we get to John in the 26th verse, John 1, 26, John answered them, and I mentioned last week about three days, so I'm going to be uh, pointing out three days on today. Uh, so John answered them saying, I baptize with water, but there standeth one among you whom ye know not. And so the first point, and I'm going to deal with three points of John uh, in this lesson. Uh, uh, usually if uh, uh, somebody is teaching a preacher uh, how to preach, they would tell him that you need three points uh, to your message. Uh, the first point will be in formation. The second point will be exhortation. And the third point will be inspiration. And those are generally the three points of a message. But I want to point out three points in this message that John delivered over the course of three days, over three days that are just a little different than what we normally do. So the First point in his message is that he is here because he said there uh, is one that's standing among you who you know not. And, and so the first point of his message is that he is here. It's a sad thing to be living in the 21st century and yet does not know that he is here. There is so much in scripture that points 
to him. And we need to know for a fact that he is here. I, I, I know he's here because like John, there are some points that I can testify to. I might not be able to testify to all of the points, but there are some that I can testify because I can tell you when the doctors were shaking their head and they didn't know what to do, God stepped in in the nick of time and I'm standing here today so I know that he is here. And in verse 27, it said that he, he it is who cometh after me is preferred before me, whose shoe lasses I am not worthy to unloose. I kind of uh, scanned over that and, 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 and talked about uh, uh, John being born about six months before Jesus, but yet he's saying that Jesus is preferred before him and and the reason he's preferred before preferred before him is because Jesus is part of the Godhead and and so before John was ever thought of Jesus was and so before don't don't so don't let that fact of being preferred before me bother you. And, and he says his shoe lat latches I'm not even worthy to unloose. That was the job of the lowest slave when the master came home or when company came into the house it was that slave's job to take water and wash the feet. And almost everybody had dirty feet when they travel the dusty road. And so I'm not going to take time and do it now, but it was a big deal when Jesus tied a towel around his waist and washed his disciples' feet. It was a big deal. We talk about humility. Uh, I, you, you, he, he said that he came to serve, and, 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 and he served at the lowest point of servitude. So in verse 28, uh, these things were done in Bethlehabara, beyond the Jordan where John was baptizing. The second point is in verse 29, and it starts off with the next day. So we've gone through one day, and now here we are at the next day. John seeing Jesus coming unto him and said, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. And so the second point of John's message, which is done on the second day, is look at him. Behold, the word behold means to look. Look, the Lamb of God. They didn't want to hear anything about the Lamb. They were looking for a king to come. They were looking for somebody that could fight their battles for them. They, they were not looking for a lamb. When they thought about a lamb, they, they thought about the, the breathing 
uh, pastures where lambs, uh, uh, sheep were put there strictly for breeding purposes because there were so many lambs that were slain. Uh, they, they, they were slain for the Passover. They were slain for sin offerings. Sometimes they had two offerings a day and so a lamb had to be killed in the morning and another lamb in the afternoon and they didn't want to hear anything about a lamb was coming but John said behold the lamb of God which taketh away the sin of the world. And I like how John wrote, he wrote sin, S-I-N, because there is a sin that is not unto death. Uh, but when you see S-I-N, it's not, it doesn't say S-I-N-S, which is the outward expressions of wrongdoing. And sometimes those sins are punishable right down here. And I'm not going to take a lot of time with that, but John, when, when you see S-I-N, he's talking about the original sin. So, so he is coming to take away the Sin. He, he's coming to get rid of the original sin. He, he's coming to bring man back into fellowship with God. Look at him. We've been taught to look at too many other things. But we need to slow down and look at him. When we talk about the Lamb of God, we can see him over in the book of Isaiah, chapter 53, dumb. Like a sheep or a lamb, he went to the shearers. But the one thing I remember is that he was bruised for my iniquities. The chastisement of my peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. It's done. It's done. It's already done. So he taketh away my sin. I'm, 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 I'm so glad that when we think about the lamb, the father of the house always chose the lamb. One that was without blemish, without spots. And I'm so glad that God is the one that chose the lamb that would be slain for us. In verse 30, this is he of whom I said. After me cometh a man which is preferred before me, for he was before me. And I've already explained how he was before him. So in verse 31, and I knew him not. I I always kind of get tickled when I'm working and, and he said, I knew him not. And you know they were cousins. And Elizabeth and Mary were pregnant at the same time. And so I can't help but to believe that uh, 
John and cousin Yeshua didn't play together. I didn't do something together. And now here it is uh, saying uh, that I knew him not. What did he mean when he said I knew him not? I might have known him as my cousin. But I didn't know him as the deliverer. I had a cousin that I played with. I had another little boy that I played with. But in my playing with him, I didn't know that he was the deliverer. It had not been manifested yet. And I knew him not, but that he should be made manifest to Israel. Therefore, am I come baptizing with water? Like John probably was saying to my, y'all missing the mark. Y'all missing the boat. Y'all want to keep questioning me about who I am. And all I'm doing is dunking them in the water. I'm just, I'm just allowing them to show the outward expression of an inward transition. And so that's all baptism, water baptism is all about. And if all you have is water baptism, you just went down dry. It came up wet. Baptism is more than that. In verse 32, and John bear record. He said, I know what I'm talking about. You can put me on stand. And John bear record saying also the spirit descending from heaven like a dove. And it abode upon him. And I want to come back and hit that dove uh, just a little bit. But let me go ahead and, and read verse 33. And after I get done uh, reading verse 33, if I don't come back and, 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 and get that dove, I want somebody to holler dove. Because I am subject to, <laughs> uh, let it slip my mind. And, and I knew him not, verse 33, and I knew him not, but, but he that sent me uh, to baptize with water. So he's saying, I'm not, I didn't just take this upon myself. I was sent to baptize with water. The same said unto me, upon whom thou shalt uh, see the Spirit. Help me say the Spirit. Spirit. Okay, now it wasn't the dove, it was the Spirit. <laughs> okay, I'll get back to that in a minute. <laughs> so, I shall see the Spirit descending and remaining on him, the same is he which baptizes with the Holy Ghost. So he's trying to tell them that water baptism is not the real essential one, but you need to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. And the, and the way I didn't know him but the one that sent me to baptize with water said to me, this is how you will know the one that's coming that's going to be baptizing with the Holy Ghost. Okay, nobody will have to say dove, I got it. So the Spirit is going to 
descend like a dove. It's not going to be a dove. We don't almost made doves the spirit. The, the dove is not, it could have been, he could have, oh, oh, I'm getting in trouble now. He could have said that it descend like a pigeon. He was just trying to show you that it would descend and then it would sit upon him. The spirit would sit upon him as a dove would come down and sit upon a post. That's the one. And he had baptized Jesus about 40 days before this occurrence that we are talking about now. And when Jesus came to the water of baptism and desired of John to baptize him. And John was saying, no, I... I don't want to do it. I need to be baptized of you. But Jesus said, just suffer it to be so. And when John baptized him, and, and if I'm not mistaken, there are only two occasions that uh, the, all three Godhead personalities came to the earth at the same time. Time They usually don't come at the same time. But when Jesus, the Son, was baptized, the Spirit came down like a dove and sat on him. And then the heavens opened up and said this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased at one time the whole Godhead uh, assembled at the waters of baptism what a day what a day God is speaking the spirit came down the sun went under all for you and all for me he did it for us everybody spent a little time on earth for a few moments trying to rush to a close now so I had to run back and kind of pick up these points I don't ask for amens but are you glad I went back and got my points thank you that's my sneaky way of trying to get an amen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. See, if you bet, okay, I'm not going to get, I almost got off point. Verse 34. And, and I saw and bear record that this is the Son of God. Verse 36. And looking upon Jesus as he walked, he said, Behold the Lamb of God. And the two disciples, now you got to understand, these two disciples were if you allow me to put it like this, John's disciples. They were following John. 
And the two disciples heard him speak. And they followed Jesus. Paul planted. Apollos water it. But God give the increase. You can't put all your credence in Paul. Can't put all your credence in Apollos. Now let me shave close here now. You can't put all your credence in Hyter. Mm. You got to hear Jesus. And when you hear Jesus, you got to follow him, which is the third point of the message, is follow him. I've been searching. Okay, I got it. Let me read a little bit, because if I, if I do that, I will not read these last two verses. And the two disciples heard him speak, and they followed Jesus. The third point, follow him. Verse 38, then Jesus turned and saw them following and said unto them, what seek ye? Now that's dancing material for me. Because when you follow Jesus, He know when you are following him. He, he can be going this direction, but he knows what's behind it. And so he looked at, he said, what seek ye? What are you looking for? What do you want? They had a strange answer. See, then Jesus turned and saw them following him and said unto them, What seek ye? They said unto him, Rabbi, uh, which is far to say being interpreted master, where dwelleth? Thou, strange, where do you stay? Where do you abide? He said unto them, come and see. They came and saw where he dwelt. I'm, I'm, I'm just I'm, I'm going to wrap up with come and see. There may be times you are trying to show somebody about the three points of a message, and they might not want to believe you. But if you will use your voice and the words of Jesus, come and see. You mean to tell me that you've changed from what you were when we were growing up? Come and see. You mean to tell me the language that you used to use, you don't use anymore? Come and see. 
Are you trying to tell me that the life that you are living now, you're going to tell me that that's better than what you used to live? Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Come and see. I'm not going to try to just convince you. I'm not going to try to get you to understand all in one setting. But I'm living the kind of life today that you can come and see. Uh, well, 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 oh, uh, uh, where do you want me to come? Well, for like of another place, come to 2001 Carpenter Road. I'll say no. Is it 2001? Thank you. You know, I don't mind asking for help. If I get a tangle up, I'll ask for help because I want to be the best JD that I can be. And he needs a little work. Sometime I, I realize I'm yet a work in progress, but how many know you may not be what you ought to be, but you show sure ain't what you used to be. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Come and see. And so Jesus is calling us today. And saying, come and see. If you come and give me a chance, you will be changed of one touch of the master's hand. Just one touch of the master's hand. You remember story I told it about a year ago the old violin that was being auctioned it didn't look like much didn't sound like much but an old man at the back walked up to the auctioneer and took that old violin out of his hand and tuned it and then took the bow and went over the strings he had asked what could i get for this old violin a dollar two dollars three but after the old man got done with it it was one thousand two thousand 3,000. They said, what made the difference? Well, the old man that got the violin was a master violinist. And they said it was the touch of the master's hand. One touch of the master's hand and your life will never be the same. Lord, for anybody that have not accepted you, let them come today. Let them come while the blood is running warm in their veins. Save them. They've been going over this in their heart and in their mind. Should I give my life to the Lord now or should I wait a while longer? Today is the day of salvation. All you have is right now. Right now. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. So, Lord, I pray that men, women, boys, and girls will give their lives to you 
this day. Turn them around. That's what repentance is all about. It's just about turning around. So turn them around. Send them in a different direction than what they are going. We will always praise you. We will magnify you. I also ask if you will take us to our several homes and bring us back to this place, glorifying and praising your name. Amen and amen. The Lord bless you. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn.